How's it going everyone? It is Eric here with Boulder Road IO where we design your product in 10 days or less. This is going to be a tutorial on how to do pagination for tables, specifically the number of rows in your table. So you'll notice here, this is 10 rows showing viewing one out of 10. If I click on 20, it will show 20 rows here. And I've just changed the date on each one of these to indicate that the number of rows have changed. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. I've created a blank copy of this right here. So there's three things that we have to do to actually make this work. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the results per page component. I've put all of the documents that I have here um, in the description. So if you want to take a look at the sketch document that I'm using, I mean, not sketch, uh, the protopie document that I'm using, you can go ahead and do that in the link below. So let's go ahead and start with the easy stuff. You'll see that I have a drop down container here. This is one of my favorite strategies to go ahead and get elements and, and hide them. You make sure that the sub layers are clipped and then you set the height to initial state of zero. So let's take care of the basic stuff, which is mouse in and out of the um, actual rows here in this drop down menu. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let me get the color here. So we're going to get color. Let's just set this to a light blue. And when we mouse over, it will go to 100. And when we mouse out, it will go to zero. Great. Now let's copy that to 20 rows, 20 rows, and let's copy that to 50 rows. All right, so now this should take care of like the highlighting when we hover over. And now we need to make the drop down menu open. So we're going to scale because the drop down containers initial state is going to be zero we will scale it to, let's see here, I believe, let's see, 64. All right, so we're gonna scale the height to 64. And it's, it's important that when you guys and gals out there go ahead and create your own pagination, always put the drop down container um, in the container that you're going to be clicking and hovering over. I'll show you why in a second. So we have the action where once we hit the page container, uh, this should be like a page number container, it will open up the drop down menu. And by scaling this container to 64 pixels. Now we're going to do some mouse out and over on the page number container. So when we mouse out, we're going to want to scale the height to zero for the drop down container. So that means when we mouse out of this, it will just collapse. And when we mouse over, we're going to want to change the color as well. So the color is going to be a hundred on this light blue. We'll go ahead and click that on page drop down. Let me get the hex value. All right. So we got that. And let's go ahead and make this color go to zero on the page drop down. Great. So page drop down, fill 100 on mouse over. You're gonna go to zero when we mouse out <clears throat> and skip. So let's see what we have now. Uh, initial state is uh, zero for this container, which I forgot to change. All right, now the initial state is gonna be zero. So we got the little hover action for the blue. Um, ooh, I hate when that happens. 
this text thing, you gotta make sure that you change the color fill, not the text. All right, so that's a quick fix here. So mouse over is gonna be changed to zero. Let's go ahead and fix these. Yeah, the layout isn't the best for some of these components in protopy. So there we go, 100, great, 100. And so when we mouse out, it will go to zero. Mouse over, 100, that is correct. Let's copy this hex value, fill, 100, great. Mouse out, zero, and mouse over, 100. Great, so now let's check and see if we actually got that. All right, finally, we got something working. And it looks like I switched. Yeah, mouse out, you want zero. Okay, great. So now we have the main functionality here for the <clears throat> interaction design. Now we actually have to send and receive messages when we actually click the row count. So I'm just going to group these layers and call hover in out. Great. And now let's tap. We're going to make this tap the row. Okay, so this is tap 10 rows. Duplicate that. This is 20 rows. This is going to be 50 rows. Great. All right, so what's going to happen is when we tap this 10 row text box here, we want it to send a message to the scene indicating that value has been clicked. So we will do that now. This is going to say 10 rows. Great. This is 20. And this is 50. All right, so. <clears throat> first part is complete. Now we have our component, the, you know, pagination thing in this bottom right here, it's going to be communicating with this scene. So in this actual scene, I've created scroll elements here that contain the number of rows that I want. And so we're going to use the receive trigger here. And with that, we can go ahead and actually change the page how we want to. So this one will be receive 10 rows. Great. This is receive 20 rows. And this is going to be receive 50 rows. So there's a, two things that we want to have happen here. We want to change the text uh, right here. So showing viewing, and then we're going to change the text of the results per page. So let's first start here with the opacity. So I've set the initial state here for these two row elements, the one, the default state is 10 rows per uh, page. And so the other row elements and containers are set to zero opacity and the 10 row element is 100. So I'm gonna change the 10 row element. So this is if we receive the 10 row message from the pagination component. And if we receive the 10 page uh, command, we want this to make the opacity of these other layers go to zero. Then what we're going to do is reorder these containers so that the 10 row container shows up first. And another thing we're going to do is text here for one out of 10. This is right here. And we're going to say one out of 10. So what this is going to do is it's going to change the opacity of the other containers here to zero. It's going to flip the capacity of the container that we want with the number of rows to 100% and put that 
container on the front of the other uh, the other containers. And this is going to change to the number that we want. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 1 out of 20. The opacity of the 20 row container is going to go to 100. And we want the 20 row container to show up front. And let's do that for here on the 50 row container. And throw that to 0. And this is 50. All right, so let's see what we're working with now. So when I click 10 uh, to 20, you'll see the number. I've just put the date and time to see, and you'll see the viewing thing here change. And the last part of this is actually changing the results per page so that on tap, um, it will change to indicate what has happened. So that's just a quick text here. The same thing we did with the view count. We're going to go ahead and change the layer for the current number of pages. And so when you tap 10, it will be 10. And when you tap 20, it will be 20. And 50 will be 50. Really straight forward. So let's see what that looks like just for this component. So we have this hover over. And then when I click 10, 20, 50, it changes. And it's wonderful. So uh, the important thing here, I forgot to mention, the reason we put the drop down container as a sub container of the thing that you're highlighting over to click this, you know, page container right here, uh, is because if I didn't, and I left it outside, this mouse out of the page container is going to cause the drop down. There's the there would be no way to click that drop down. So that's why we put the drop down container as a sub container contained within the pagination. So that was a quick tutorial. Again, let's go ahead and see the full scene. That was a quick tutorial showing how you can make a dashboard have pagination row changes. Um, and reflect to the user through some small interaction design um, the, the, the change in terms of value of rows. So thanks again for watching. This was Eric here. I'll be signing off. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Cheers.